In this episode of Bartending Pro, I'm going to show you how to set up the ultimate home bar. So welcome to 2017. Hope your holidays were good. Hopefully you didn't experience too many hangovers and hopefully grandma did not get you another sweater. So in this episode, what I want to talk about is something that I've had many of you ask me to do a video about and that is how to set up a good home bar. Now when it comes to this, this is gonna depend on your personal preference on how grandiose you wanna make this. And it's also gonna depend on what you like to drink. And then if you wanna play host and you wanna be able to make drinks for your friends, then maybe think about what do they like to drink. But when you are setting up a home bar, there are a couple of kind of just main, obviously, things that you need to have so that it, it can function for you. So obviously the first thing that we need is liquor. So we need our hard alcohols. You can have beers, you can have wines, um, whatever you want to have in your bar. And again, start by thinking about what do you like to drink? What are the, some of the drinks that you wanna make? and build your list from there. Some of the basic main alcohols are vodka, gin, rum, tequila, whiskeys and bourbons and cognacs, scotches, and those are like your main kind of hard alcohols. Then behind those you want to have flavoring agents or liqueurs, so Kahluas and Baileys, like I love Frangelico or Chambord, any of the fruity flavored stuff, or like Fireball, Jägermeister, Rumpelmints, you get my point. Now the next thing with all this alcohol, because again, because it can be expensive, is to just kind of start small. It would be really easy to go into a store and spend several hundred dollars or even thousands of dollars stocking a home bar. So what you can do is just kind of start small and build this thing up. When I was a bachelor and we lived in a single house, one of the things that we did is that every paycheck, we would all go buy one bottle of booze. You know, we had a little cool bar built in there and it wasn't anything extensive, but it was fun to have a small variety of things and it just does look kind of cool when you have more than just vodka and tequila sitting on your rack. So we would just kind of spread it out like once every few weeks or once a month we would all go buy one bottle to put into the bar and over a few months you end up building up a pretty good bar. So stretch it out. Okay then moving on from our alcohols the next thing you want to think about is mixers. This can be anything from like simple syrups and bitters to your like sodas and tonics and juices for whatever you want to use as mixers for your alcohols. So just reflecting on what you drink and what you want to drink or what your friends drink that you want to make for them. Next we need our tools. You can get away with a lot of this stuff, if, if, especially if you're making it at a home bar. You don't need to have the same tool set that you have in an actual bar. Most of the stuff in, a, in an actual bar comes down to consistency and quality control. Now, again, you can go crazy with this and buy whatever you want. So I'd say if you're looking for just like kind of the basic tools that you want to have in the bar, you want to have like a jigger so you can measure stuff, maybe like some shaker tins, pour spouts, or like quality pour spouts so that you can just work on your pours, but also helps you count so you know what you're pouring anyway. Muddlers, bar spoon, like mixing spoon, strainers, peelers so you can make cool fancy peels with your garnishes and then like a citrus press so you can squeeze lemons and limes and if you have those at your home bar that's pretty well stocked i mean that's basically all you're going to have in a regular bar anyway you probably won't need many more tools than that then speaking of garnishes you want to maybe have some sort of garnishes for yourself think of ones that you can put in your fridge that will last long term obviously some of these are fruit and so they're going to be more perishable than like mixers or alcohols that just kind of hang on the shelf olives cherries could be a fun one horseradish for or spicy stuff if you want to put in bloody mary mix and then your main citrus fruits of lemons limes oranges stuff like tabasco worcestershire sauce salt pepper I personally like tahini, sugar, and then make sure you have ice or you can make ice. So the caveat is always coming back to what do you think you're gonna be drinking? That's what you wanna get. Next on the list for stuff that we need is glassware. And again, this is stuff that you don't have to buy. You can just make do with whatever the hell you have in your house in terms of making cocktails for yourself or for your friends. But if you wanna get fancy, then you can kinda of get a more broad selection. And this could be one of those things that you kinda of buy out a couple pieces at a time and just build up a simple selection of different types of glassware. You can have like martini glasses, 
you can have short rocks glasses, you can have tall highball or Collins glass, and then if you're like a beer connoisseur, you can have like Stein mugs or whatever those things are called, the huge fucking big ones that you get at Oktoberfest. I think they're called beer steins. Snifters are a good one, so like little brandy snifters, and that's good for like brandies or cognacs, but also like any sort of nice alcohol, like if you have any real nice top shelf stuff, you can always drink them in snifters. I mean, I drink my nice tequila, uh, in snifters. Shot glasses, so just cool little fun shot glasses. You can have like measuring shot glasses. But just go into a store and have a look around. And then some other fun stuff is like cocktail books. Just some kind of fun fact stuff or generic recipe books or like craft cocktailing type stuff. Those are all cool fun books. And there's a million of those out there. Other things to think about is like maybe shelving. You wanna have shelves on the wall or like shelves underneath the bar itself so that you can have storage either for your booze or for your glassware or for make your mixers. If you wanna get real snazzy, maybe you have like a little mini fridge or like a wine fridge. And then you can get crazy with like decorations. Maybe you wanna have like a like a sports theme. We have a family friend of ours that has their entire garage turned into, uh, it's basically like a crazy Packer fan bar built into his garage. It's just got memorabilia and shit all over the walls and the ceilings and, and it's just like a good time. And then other stuff is you can get as crazy with this as you want to all the way up to making this like a real actual functioning working bar where you have soda highball guns, where you have juices and mixers on those guns. You can have drafts put into your house, like coolers built in where you have kegs, you can have like a keg room, you can have like chilled wine rooms. I mean, you can go ape shit with this if you have a lot of money, which if you can do that, then cool. Give me a call, drop me a line. This is limited only by your imagination. The type of home bar that you wanna have and how you set it up will always come down to what you're interested in drinking, how you wanna prepare your drinks, friends that you think are gonna come over and what you think you wanna make for them or what you think they might be drinking, and just the type of vibe that you wanna have in your home bar. Maybe it's top class craft quality stuff, Maybe it's just sports bar because you're a football fan. Whatever it is, make it unique to you and that's what's gonna be the most fun. Think about what you would wanna have if you could just paint the picture of the ultimate bar. Slowly build it up over time because if you do this all at once, it's gonna be really expensive and you'll probably change your mind on a few things as you go along if you do it that way anyway as opposed to just going out and dropping a couple grand to build out this huge grandiose bar in your house. Unless you got the money for it, then hey, fucking knock yourself out and have a good time. Okay, I think that'll be it for this one. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or on the blog. Again, happy new year's to you. I got a lot of new stuff coming out this year, including a complete entire facelift for the Bartending Blueprint site, as well as for the Bartending Pro channel. And if there's anything specific that you would like to see me shoot a video about, or you would like to see me talk about or cover, then please feel free to let me know, and I will do my best to get it up there for you. Thank you for watching and being part of the conversation. My name's Jason. This has been making you a Bartending Pro. I'll see you next time. Take care. For more, check out these playlists and subscribe to get new videos.